Thank you for joining me today to talk about nutrition during stem cell transplant. This presentation focuses on food safety recommendations during transplant and other nutrition concerns. We will review some of the specific foods you need to avoid during transplant. We will also discuss nutrition goals during transplant and some resources that you may find helpful. After you have a stem cell transplant, your immune system is compromised. This means that you are at a higher risk for getting an infection and this includes foodborne illness. It will be very important for you and the people you live with to practice good food safety in order to prevent you from getting sick. Bacteria that can make you sick are in many places in the kitchen. Make sure you wash your hands and all of the places food touches before and after preparing food. Wash your hands with warm soapy water for at least 20 seconds. You should wash your cutting boards and countertops with hot soapy water before and after preparing food. Don't forget areas like faucets, sink drains, fridge handles, and small appliances. Wash the tops of cans and jars before you open them. Clean your can opener, blender, and mixer blades before and after each use. You should be using a clean kitchen cloth every day. You can also use paper towels. Make sure you are washing cloths and towels often in the hot cycle of the washing machine. Sponges are difficult to keep free of bacteria and should not be used. You can wash your vegetable brush and kitchen scissors in the dishwasher every day. Wash fruit and vegetables under running water with some friction. You should wash them even if you are not going to eat their skin as bacteria can be transferred when you cut into them or peel them. Use a vegetable brush to rub firm fruits and vegetables like potatoes or carrots under running water. You do not need to use a produce wash or any other products to clean your fruit and vegetables. Keeping raw food and cooked food separate prevents bacteria from moving from one food to another. Keep uncooked eggs and raw meat from touching food that is already cooked or food that will be eaten raw. Keep raw meat, chicken, and fish at the bottom of the fridge to keep juices from dripping on other foods. When you are preparing food, use one cutting board for raw meat, chicken, or fish, and a different one for fruit and vegetables. Cooking your food to the correct temperature kills bacteria. Use a clean thermometer to make sure your food has reached a safe temperature. Serve food as soon as it is cooked and always keep food above 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Eggs should be cooked until the yolk and white are firm. Clams, oysters, and mussels are cooked when they open. Throw away ones that do not open. Cook stuffing separately from the chicken or turkey. When you are cooking gravy, soups, or sauces, bring them to a boil. Reheat leftovers only once and bring them to a boil. Throw away any leftovers after they have been reheated once. If you are cooking food in a microwave, make sure you stir the food a few times during cooking. Microwaves can leave cool spots in the food where bacteria can live. Stirring will make sure that the food is heated through evenly. It is also important to keep cold foods cold. The cold temperature prevents bacteria from growing. Put raw food, leftovers, and prepared foods in the fridge or freezer within two hours. If it has been sitting out longer than two hours, throw it away. Put leftovers into small, shallow containers so they cool faster. Don't defrost food at room temperature. You can safely thaw food in the fridge, in cold water, or in the microwave. There are some things you can do to keep your food safe from bacteria while you are grocery shopping. Keep your meat, chicken, fish, and eggs separate from the rest of the food in your grocery cart and grocery bags. Make sure your milk, yogurt, and cheese are all pasteurized. Don't buy food that has a best before date that has passed or is close to expiring. Don't buy cans or jars that have dents, cracks, or bulging lids. Pick up refrigerated or frozen foods last. Put these foods away first once you get home. Go home as soon as you are finished grocery shopping to store food properly. If you use reusable grocery bags or bins, wash them out with warm, soapy water. After transplant, when your immune system is compromised, there are some foods that you will need to be more careful with or avoid completely. You should follow these guidelines for six months after your autologous stem cell transplant 
or 12 months after your allogeneic stem cell transplant. Ask your dietitian if you have questions about when you can have these foods. Make sure all meat, poultry, fish, and shellfish is cooked completely. You will need to avoid raw meat and fish dishes like tartare or sushi. Smoked meat or seafood should also be cooked. All non-dry deli meats will need to be heated to steaming before you eat them. This includes items like hot dogs, roast beef, and turkey breasts. Dried and salted deli meats like salami and pepperoni do not need to be heated before eating. Any packaged deli meats or deli meat sliced in store should be used within two days of opening. There are some foods that you will need to avoid completely. Do not have any raw or unpasteurized milk or any foods made from unpasteurized milk. The milk you buy at the grocery store will always be pasteurized and this is safe to have. Avoid soft and semi-soft cheeses like brie, camembert, and blue vein cheeses. Avoid raw or partly cooked eggs or egg products. Store-bought mayonnaise, salad dressing, and eggnog are safe because they have been pasteurized. However, if you are making these products at home with raw eggs, you will need to avoid them. Avoid raw sprouts like alfalfa, mung bean, or radish sprouts. Avoid unpasteurized fruit juice or cider. These types of products are commonly found in the produce section of the grocery store or at the farmer's market. Look for the word pasteurized on the container to make sure it is safe. The goals during transplant are to maintain your weight as much as possible. You will likely encounter side effects that will affect your ability to eat, such as taste changes, decreased appetite, and nausea. It is important to get enough calories and protein even when you are having these side effects. Your team will help you to manage these side effects. You may need to eat more on a schedule and try some foods that you normally do not eat. During transplant and when you are recovering, your body needs more calories and protein than normal. This is during a time when you likely are not eating as much. Try to choose foods high in calories and protein. The goal is to get enough calories to prevent your body from breaking down your muscles for energy and to get enough protein to help you heal and recover. It may seem overwhelming to need to eat more food than normal. Try to make every bite count by increasing the calories in the foods that you are already eating. You can add cheese, butter, margarine or oil to your cooked vegetables and eggs. Use sauces and gravies on meat. Eat your fruit with ice cream, yogurt, or cottage cheese. If you eat dairy, choose the higher fat versions. Avocados are great additions to smoothies and soups. You may find it easier to drink your calories rather than eat them. You can use commercial nutrition supplements like Enger or Boost, or you can make your own high calorie smoothies. If you need ideas, ask your dietitian. In addition to needing more calories, you also need to make sure you are getting enough protein. A lot of people don't tolerate meat temporarily after transplant. Eggs, dairy, nuts, and beans are all good sources of protein. Beans, peas, and lentils are soft and easy to eat. They can also be blended and added to soups or baking. Try adding nut butters, hemp hearts, or chia seeds to your foods or smoothies to add extra protein. You can also use protein powders. The most common type of protein powder is whey protein powder, which is dairy-based, but you can also find soy or pea versions. If you get an unflavored version of protein powder, you can add it into soups, smoothies, and anything else with a bit of liquid in it. You will probably hear a lot that you need to drink enough fluid, especially after transplant. The general goal is 2 liters, but some people need more and some people need less. It is important to get enough fluid to maintain good kidney function and good blood pressure. Keep in mind that this does not mean that you need to drink 2 liters of plain water. Water often tastes bad after transplant, which can make it difficult to get in enough fluid. You can drink flavored water, milk, coffee, tea, soups, smoothies, or nutrition supplement drinks. Up to 4 cups of caffeinated beverages like coffee counts towards your daily fluid intake. If you are interested in learning more about nutrition information related to cancer, you can find evidence-based information at the Canadian Cancer Society 
or the American Institute for Cancer Research websites. If you would like general nutrition information, the Unlock Food website is a great resource provided by the Dietitians of Canada. Cook for Your Life has some good recipes that are designed for cancer patients going through treatment and afterwards. There are some great resources available to you for more information. There are two nutrition classes that may be of interest to you. The Power of Nutrition discusses how to eat while you are going through treatment, and the Nutrition Myths class goes over some of the popular myths, controversies, and trends related to nutrition and cancer. This presentation was designed to provide some basic nutrition information related to stem cell transplant. If you have questions after viewing this presentation, please ask your team to connect you with a dietitian. We have dietitians who specialize in this area located in both Calgary and Edmonton who can meet with you in person or chat on the phone.